This is a side scrolling platform. This is a side scrolling platformer. It is a continuation of the platform jumper example from before. If you haven't seen that example, you might want to check it out because we'll only really look at what's changed with this example. We have the ability to jump on platforms like before, but we also have the ability to go left and right and have the entire world basically scrolling around. This basically opens up a whole new window, so to speak, on a larger world, allowing us to do more different things and in a smaller screen real estate. We also have the ability to switch between levels. If I scroll far enough off to the right, bam, we're now on level two. Yeah, level two looks a whole lot like level one, but we're just gonna worry about the mechanics of this. I'll leave it up to you to actually make something interesting. Be sure to email it to me if you do. All right, let's take a look at the code. To begin with, we've got our colors and our screen width and height. Nothing new there. Great, we've got our player class. Player class doesn't change, works just like it did before. That's great, we don't have to learn anything new. Wow, that's a big long class. Glad we don't have to learn anything new. We've got our platform class, a basic sprite that just is filled in with a color. Don't have to learn anything new. Wow, finally, all the way down here, 150 lines in the program, 160 lines, we finally got something that's new. What we have are world shift and level limits. When we start off with the game, we have a viewport into the world that's about as big as this red square that I'm drawing. But the actual full ability of what we hold is contained in a much larger window that we can't get on the screen. This window right here will be whatever the width, like maybe 500 pixels or something. And this whole thing might be 1500 pixels. So we might have three screens or something even larger. Then as our person on here moves, as the person moves to the right, instead of actually continually moving the person to the right, what we're actually going to do is move the entire world to the left. We're going to shift it. And if we shift it to the left, what we're actually doing is shifting it a negative amount. So if we shift the whole world to the left 200 pixels, then our actual viewport is going to look something like this. Excuse me, I'm really enjoying playing with the colors here. My viewport for the red screen is here. And I've got 200 pixels off here and then the rest of the world over like this. And this red screen is basically, that's the window that we see, and we're shifting the green back and forth. Whereas the red actually stays reasonably still, we're just shifting the background because it's easier that way. This world shift is the blue number. So that negative 200, dark blue I realize on a dark background, that's terrible. But anyway, any rate, the negative 200 that I've got on the screen, that is the world shift as we shift and our person goes from left or right. And the level limit is basically at what point does this screen get? So when I've got my whole green screen here, at what point do I get when I shift this and have my person in it that I go, okay, it is now time for level two. That's the level limit. Because I don't want to continually go where I don't have any ability for a map to happen. The shift, world shift, level limit, how far I go before I flip to the next level or end the game or something. Two new variables that we've added. Hope you got that. The init looks like it did before. The update looks like it did before. The draw looks like it did before. Shift world is a new function. Shift world just takes an input of shift X and then we add that to the shift for world shift what we had up there before. And then I take every single platform and every single enemy and shift them. 
So the player actually stays exactly where the player was before. I'm just shifting the entire world because it's easier than moving the player because the player needs to keep an absolute reference to where the window is. We're just going to shift everything else. Seems kind of egocentric to have basically the entire world orbit around the player instead of the other way around, but that's the way it works. Shift world shifts the entire world, and if you're keeping track of multiple lists of sprites, you need to shift them as well. All right, level one looks like it did before, nothing new here. Level two, um, that's a new level, but it looks a whole lot like level one. We just defined the walls and whatnot. I slightly changed them so you can see things were different. Note that we shift the level limit right here. This defines how far we can move before we run out of level. Making me think this variable right here probably isn't needed. Let me take that out. Yep, indeed, that was an extra variable that I must have moved to the other level and didn't leave it there. This is how big this particular level can be. This is how big this level can be. You can set different values. Not much different than before, except right here, I'm creating two different levels instead of the one level I was in Platform Jumper. Scrolling down, not much different, until I get to right here. This is the key with shifting the world. If the player on the screen forget exactly how wide my screen is, like maybe 700 or something. If the player gets far enough to the right, specifically 500 pixels for the top left corner of the player, once that happens, then if, for instance, it's 502, I'm gonna shift everything over two pixels. If the player gets too far over to the left, like 118, I'm going to shift everything two pixels this way so that I'm at 120. Therefore, the 500 basically checks how far left or how far right you can go, and it will shift the entire world to keep the person at least at 120 or 500, somewhere between those two numbers. This is where the shifting happens, and we shift the entire world by calling current level shift world. This part, a little bit farther down, actually does the level change. I find my current position, which is a matter of where the player is on the screen, right here. Wow, that's a terrible player. Along with how far I've actually shifted the entire world. And once I shift the world so far, then at this point I hit the level limit, that negative 1000, once I've shifted it 1000 pixels to the right plus where the player is on the screen then I go ahead and say the current level level up to level 2 change the walls and everything to whatever level 2 is and tell the player that we're on level 2 so the player can check to make sure that he or she does not run into those walls it would also be possible to go back levels and if you did that by having the level object contained in the level list we could do so and keep all the enemies all the coins everything the way the level used to be and so it doesn't look like the players actually got a brand new level where everything's respawned and reset very cool then we just draw everything and we're set all right so that's how it works basically this is the new part where we check and take a look at shifting from left to right this switches our levels. Going back up here to the level objects, nothing too new here, but we do have a shift world, which is part of the base class of level. And that shift world then actually shifts absolutely everything in the world, except the player, left or right, because our world revolves around the player. And there you go. That's basically how this platformer works in order to get the side scrolling working.